I'm going to tell y'all something really wonderful, man. Albert Einstein has a quote that changed my life. Because it's something that we all have and you may have never understood it. Albert Einstein said, Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. If you can get this right here, this can change it for you. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. That means everything you see in this world came from somebody's imagination. Everything. Somebody was talking on the phone one day and it was connected to the wall. And they was walking and they went, man, I sure wish this phone would go outside. Everybody in here got a cell phone. Imagination is everything. See, you've been thinking all this time that your imagination was just some hocus pocus. It ain't. I want you to hear me on this one. Because this is the most powerful thing that I can tell you today. Albert Einstein had that quote. But Albert Einstein took that quote out the Bible. I don't know who you've been talking to that's been telling you all these sayings about money. Money, money is the root of all evil. Money can't buy you happiness. Money can't buy you happiness. But I tell you what, though, it'll park you right in front of Happy's house. You can at least see if he home. See, listen to me. Albert Einstein took the second half of my mother's favorite scripture. My mother's favorite scripture is, and you've all heard it, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It just means, really, that the pure essence of faith, it ain't nothing but hope. At one point in time, you're going to have to get smart now, people. All that hoping after you become an adult, it shouldn't be hope no more. This ought to start turning into some faith. Quit hoping, man. Turn it into faith. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. Ask for something from God. You don't know how in the world you're going to get it. That's what ought to be on your vision board. Don't put a bunch of stuff on there you can get. You know what's on my vision board? Things I have no idea how I'm going to get. I got $3 billion on my vision board. Why $3 billion? I don't know, more than one. What you gonna do with $3 billion? I have no idea. Well, when I get it, you will know I have it. Look, man, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Your imagination is the evidence of things not seen. You know why it's the evidence of things not seen? Because your imagination, you're the only one can see it. Nobody can see your imagination but you. But God places what he has for you in your imagination. Your imagination is a preview of a coming attraction God has for you. That's what your imagination is. That's what it's been this whole time. All them times you've been imagining being rich, that wasn't just up there. God put it in your head because that's what he got for you. That big house you keep wanting, God put it in your head because that's what God got for you. When you keep dreaming of taking a summer vacation somewhere, that's because that's what God got for you because that's a coming attraction that God has for you. That's what your imagination is. You've been tripping. You know how many times you done wrote your imagination off? You know the danger about your imagination? You tell it to the wrong people. That's the danger. You want to kill a big dream? Tell it to a small-minded person. Boy, they'll shoot it down every time, won't they? You know how many wonderful ideas you've had. 
stuff that God gave to you, you thought was, man, this is it. You went in there to your friends and your family and you shared it with them and they shot it down. You know why they shot it down? Because they ain't see it. You know why they ain't see it? Because God ain't give it to them because he put it in your imagination. If he'd have wanted them to imagine it, he'd have put it in their head. That's why people can't see what you're going to be. That teacher of mine, look at you, you're standing there. You can't even talk. How they gonna put somebody like you on TV? Well, lady, what you didn't know was I wasn't gonna stutter forever. You didn't know God was gonna get me over to stuttering, did you? You didn't see it. Cause nobody else from 112th Street ever been on TV. You ain't think I'd be the first. You know why? Cause you ain't see it. God didn't put me being on TV in her head. He put it in my head. I was just dumb enough to think it could happen. When you gonna get dumb enough to think that your imagination is real? If I was you, I'd hurry up in the district. I really would. Some of y'all so smart. That's so good you, I'm gonna be you same boat. No, you're not. Chances of you being you same boat. Put imagine the stuff that really is real. It's over. Because in that same class, my best friend wrote on the paper at 10, he wanted to be a doctor. I knew at 10, this was an impossibility. Lonnie can't even read. What doctor you know can't read? What you want to write on your paper is what you gifted at. What are you gifted at? What is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort? That's your gift. That's what ought to be on paper. God has been using your imagination to show you your gift. I don't appreciate him talking about the Lord that much. I didn't like the jokes. We're here for motivation. I didn't like the jokes. Well, okay. Whatever. Somebody always finds something wrong with what you're doing. Even if it's okay. Somebody always. But you know what? It don't matter what they say. Because what they say don't matter. Who is these people talking about me? You remember I told you a minute ago, don't try to change yourself. Because you ain't got to change. You know God going to work with you just the way you are. Listen to me. There will be no more levels for you unless you get to the next level of your faith. There ain't no more levels for you, partner. You where you at. I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on, but I never understood that concept. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything except my faith. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Fall forward. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. You've got to take risks, and I'm sure you've probably heard that before, but I want to talk to you about why that's so important. First, you will fail at some point in your life. Accept it. You will lose. You will embarrass yourself. You will suck at something. Embrace it. Be
because it's inevitable. And I should know. In the acting business, you fail all the time. Early on in my career, I auditioned for a part in a Broadway musical. Perfect role for me, I thought. Except for the fact that I can't sing. I didn't get the job. But here's the thing. I didn't quit. I didn't fall back. I walked out of there to prepare for the next audition, and the next audition, and the next audition. I prayed, I prayed, and I prayed, but I continued to fail, and fail, and fail. But it didn't matter, because you know what? There's an old saying, you hang around the barbershop long enough, sooner or later you're going to get a haircut. So you will catch a break, and I did catch a break. Here's my second point about failure. If you don't fail, you're not even trying. I'll say it again. If you don't fail, you're not even trying. My wife told me this great expression. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Les Brown, he made an analogy about this. He says, imagine you're on your deathbed, and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. And they're standing around your bed, disappointed and upset. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? So you got to get out there. You got to give it everything you got, whether it's your time. talent, your prayers, or your treasures. What are you going to do with what you have? I'm not talking about how much you have. Some of you have money. Some of you have patience. Some of you have kindness. Some of you have love. Some of you have the gift of long suffering, whatever it is, whatever your gift is. What are you going to do with what you have? All right, now here's my last point about failure. Sometimes, it's the best way to figure out where you're going. Your life will never be a straight path. So not only take risks,
but to be open to life, to accept new views, and to be open to new opinions. Because the chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. Never be discouraged. Never hold back. Give everything you got. And when you fall throughout life, remember this, fall forward. And we've all had experiences where we were working on something and we knew it was possible. And we did those things that were necessary to bring it into reality. We took the responsibility to make it happen. Other people couldn't see it. A lot of people didn't believe it. You were attacked, you were criticized. People were opposing you, but you kept on doing it. It was hard, it was rough, it was difficult. But to you, it was worth it. And eventually you got to a level you know, can nothing stop me now. I'm on the move. I'm on the move.